Zion National Park is the last national park alphabetically, but it wasn't always that way. The park, located in the southwestern corner of Utah, has secrets dating back many centuries, hidden within the landscape of the park. Over time, many people would come to discover the secrets of Zion, each gaining valuable knowledge from those who came before. And even in the 21st century, when the park gets around 4.5 million visitors annually, Zion continues to contain mysteries waiting for visitors to discover. So what makes this place such an important area that it was destined to become one of America's national parks? Today, we find out. Welcome to Zion National Park. To discover how Zion came to be geologically, we must first zoom out to get a grander perspective on what formations lie in southern Utah and northern Arizona, specifically a feature called the Grand Staircase, which is responsible for a couple of the other national parks as well, including Bryce Canyon to the north and Grand Canyon to the south. The oldest rocks come from the Grand Canyon, gradually growing younger as you go north until reaching Bryce Canyon, where the rocks date back to only around the time of the extinction of the dinosaurs. In the middle of this staircase is Zion Canyon, whose creation began not unlike many other geographical formations in America's national parks, through water. 240 million years ago, present-day Utah is a flat basin that is slowly filled up by gravels, sands, and mud in a process called sedimentation. As millions of years go by, the landscape changes drastically, with ancient seas coming and going, hardening sediments into stone. And then across the middle of the continent spring the Rocky Mountains, a formidable barrier, dividing the land in two. Just to the west of the mountains, Zion is caught in the uplifting, and soars to heights of almost 10,000 feet above sea level. But water can still change the landscape even at towering heights, and the Virgin River carves away at the rocks of southern Utah, molding them into a deep canyon which the river still flows through today. With the formation of the canyon came the peoples who would ultimately come to define the landscape for centuries. The two groups which would leave the most impactful mark on the land around Zion would be the Fremont and Anasazi Indians, the former of which were an agricultural people who were named after the Fremont River, meaning noble protector. The Fremont left petroglyphs across Utah and its neighboring states, some of which can still be seen in national parks and other public lands today. The Anasazi are best known for their massive cliff dwellings, such as those of the Massa Verde National Park a couple hundred miles east of Zion. More recently, tribes like the Ute, Paiute, and Navajo lived in the area of southern Utah, and the Paiute were the people who gave the canyon the name that the area would originally come into the National Park Service Hunter, Makuntui, meaning Straight Canyon or Straight River. For those who have been tuning into RAC series covering the national parks for a while, or even if this is your first RAC video, it's important to note that the peoples who lived here before the arrival of Europeans often get very little credit for their names for particular places in the modern day especially because attempts to translate words into European languages can sometimes result in different pronunciations and meanings than the original intention of the word. Many of the states within the U.S. owe their names to Native American words, and most people don't look too deep into what the words actually mean. So as we close this segment on the first peoples here in Zion, remember those who lived here so long ago, with a series of unique and distinct cultures that span beyond the reach of the national park system, and into the very fabric of the history of the North American continent itself. As settlement into the West began to occur by many people in the eastern United States heading out to the unknown territory to start a new life for themselves, one religious group, the Mormons, were forced out of the East from places like Illinois and Missouri and eventually found their way to Utah Territory. Their leader Brigham Young began to establish an official community in northern Utah near the Great Salt Lake, but Mormons were spread out throughout the area, including some in McCuntaweep Canyon, which was first given a new name by a man called Isaac Bahunin, who established a cabin in the canyon and named the canyon Little Zion. Zion being a Hebrew word meaning sanctuary or refuge, a moniker the canyon certainly lived up to by Bahunin standards. However, Zion would not fall into the eye of the general public until the 20th century, when President William Howard Taft proclaimed the canyon Makuntaweep National Monument in 1909. And then, when National Park Director Horace Albright visited the area in 1917, he saw its potential and beauty and pushed for it to become a national park, which it did only two years later in 1919 under the name Zion, which Albright insisted was easier to pronounce and say. Zion has changed a lot since its inception as a national monument, and eventually a national park, and today navigating the park can be difficult, especially during the summer months, when crowds take the park by storm. It is very convenient, as is the case with Yosemite Valley in California as well, to walk or take a form of public transportation to your destination while at Zion, as driving in the valley portion of the park is often impractical and not a very enjoyable experience. But what is there to do in Zion Canyon? Two of the most popular experiences are the strenuous hike to Angel's Landing, and the navigation of a section of the North Fork of the Virgin River called the Narrows. Starting with Angel's Landing, the hike to the top of this impressively featured boldly standing out for the rest of the canyon takes five and a half miles round trip, but those who are careful and physically prepared will find this trail a nice challenge with the fantastic reward at the top of Angel's Landing, named so because it was thought that only angels could have landed on such a beautiful spot. 
Further up in the canyon, at the level of the river, is the Narrows, less of a hike than a watery adventure, wading through passages sometimes only 20 to 30 feet across, in water that can get up to your waist at times, providing a nice respite from the often scorching temperatures in the hot months. Other canyon attractions include the Court of the Patriarchs, a series of rock formations jutting out from the canyon rim, and speaking of the rim, two trails extend along both rims of the canyon, offering multi-day adventures in the backcountry, exploring not only the rim, but the surrounding desert. Outside of the canyon, two other sections comprise the rest of Zion. Heading east from the canyon is the Zion Mount Carmel Highway, passing by the Checkerboard Mesa, a standout rock formation near the park's east entrance. And to the northwest of the canyon, accessible by an exit off of Interstate 15, is the Colobe Canyon unit of the park, a truly epic backcountry experience in the smaller canyons of Zion. What else will you find besides humans in Zion? Why animals and plants, of course. Iconic western animals such as the mule deer and bighorn sheep dot the Zion landscape, providing an exciting sight for visitors who have never seen an animal like them before. Trees at Zion include the Utah juniper and pinyon pine, which line the roads and trails of Zion, and provide a place of shade along the Virgin River and Zion Canyon. To learn more about the wildlife of Zion, be sure to check out the National Park Service's website about the park. From the soaring skyward cliffs, to the deep historical impact of all those who lived and visited here, it's no wonder that this sanctuary, this refuge, is one of America's most iconic and most visited national parks. And with that statement, this series officially comes to a close. As more national parks are created, RAC will be there to provide you, dear viewers, with all the essential information about the wonders of America, this brilliant, bold, beautiful nation. But until that time comes, our National Park Briefly series has reached its conclusion. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us on this journey through some of America's finest natural areas, and stay tuned for more informative content about not just national parks, but many interesting topics in general. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You've been watching National Parks Briefly. Goodbye.